My name is Jack Edward, and if you run D&D, or you're a game master for other tabletop role-playing games, fiction games, whatever, your number one skill, your number one most important, uh, ability is your ability to improvise. And today, I'm gonna introduce you to the best tool, your new secret weapon for improvising well. Oracles. I'm going to take you through how to use them, show you my favorites, and give you tips on how to bring this incredible solo gaming tool um, out of solo games and into your GMing for tabletops um, and for big groups. I'm Jack Edward, and this is Play Material. <laughs> Here is the most cliched story you hear about D&D, right? You uh, prep this huge game and your players <laughs> ask you the questions that you haven't prepared for. Uh, so you said that, so you, you're, you're in a temple, right? So you said this temple is abandoned and you're like, uh, uh, sure, why? And your player goes, well, I'm a lore master bard with a specialty in religion, so I want to know why the temple's abandoned. I, I, oh, look, I rolled a nat 20 history check. Like, tell me why. You have no idea. You have no idea. Or maybe they you need to generate random treasure. The 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 BBEG they kill him. He's got a great ring on him. The bad guy has a great ring on him, and they're like, "What does the ring do?" And you're like, "That's a cool idea. I didn't prep that at all." Or maybe they run into an NPC, the drunk in the tavern, and you just wanted to put a drunk at the end of the bar. And instead of going to meet the quest giver, they want to befriend this guy and figure out what his deal is, right? Uh, what do you do in moments like this? You're supposed to say yes and, right? That's the whole thing we hear from the improv community is a yes and. You're supposed to say, okay, cool, and you give them something great, but it's really hard to make things up on the spot. It's incredibly difficult to make things up on the spot, um, and we need tools for that. We need a little bit of help. And so what you're going to do in these scenarios is you're going to reach for an oracle, uh, and so what is an oracle? An oracle is an interpretive tool that is usually meant to be used with like dice or sometimes it's a deck of cards, some sort of random generation tool, um, usually paired with like a table. I'll show you a few in a second. And they generate interpretive prompts that help you um, move forward on your story. You might be thinking, wait, Jesus, dude, is this a video about having random tables on hand? Uh, no. Not just any random tables, a very particular kind of table. Um, uh, I've G I G GM'd for like 20 years, full of games, chock full of random tables, right? Uh, D and D, Warhammer Fantasy roleplay, whatever, right? Um, all kinds. Before I finally encountered um, oracles, right? These aren't your dad's random tables. This is something new. This is something very cool and very new. Um, so. I, at a certain point, I got really into solo games, and these are, solo games are on the rise, by the way, so that's RPGs that you play either by yourself or GM-less RPGs that you can play with friends, and it took me discover, and these, because these games, you need to be able to generate a lot of unexpected things, right? You need to be able to lay a lot of track in front of yourself without having sort of planned an adventure um, in advance. And so when I discovered solo games, which I've talked about a little on my channel, um, I discovered these things called oracles. And there's three kinds of oracles or random tables, but there's one I want to talk about. So I'm going to use Sean Tompkins. He's the guy, who, Sean Tompkins, the guy who wrote um, Iron Sworn. I'm going to use his taxonomy of the three different kind of tables and then get down to in, uh, abstract oracles. There are three different kinds of random tables in the game space. There are specifics. These are random tables that generate hard outputs, concrete nouns, a wandering monster table, a table that generates trinkets, right? They have their, or, or names. They generate something very um, uh, concrete that can take shape immediately in your world. They're, an an they're a specific answer to usually a very narrow question. What is the name of the Viking? What is, how many coins does this guy have? Then there are the second category, which is general oracles, which usually have story suggestions that give shape to something. So, for example, I'm going to pull out, um, let me see if I can get, uh, like, oh, this is a really cool one, like, story clue. Okay, here's an, uh, um, a cool oracle called Story Complications and Story Clues. Um, so, if a story complication, enemy reveals their true agenda or nature. 
natural disaster is imminent. What's another good one here? Oh, the time pressure suddenly increases, right? So something bad happens, but it, you, you need a complication, you need to heighten the stakes, and a general oracle helps you make some suggestions, right? Another one here I have is um, combat action. So your enemy's going to do something really cool, but... Ah, oh, shit, man. Like, I don't know what. What kind of cool thing are they going to do? I roll on the combat action, so this is a D100 table. 23. 23. Create a distraction, right? And it's general because that can mean all sorts of things. A dragon creates a distraction in a very different way than a thief does or an assassin, right? Or the an orc warlord. Maybe the way he creates a distraction is using an entire... A uh, small army to advance on the enemy. Who knows, right? But you see what I mean by general um, oracles. These are, these are very cool and these are very useful. But these are also not what I want to get at. I want to talk about the third type of random table that we want to look into today, which are which are called um, abstract oracles. These oracles are are so general that they are meant to ping off of your imagination like a tuning fork. So they use, I'm going to use a classic one here from that same book. This is an this is a abstract oracle called Action and Theme. And what they do is they generate a random set of nouns, sometimes actions, descriptors, themes, adjectives. Right, This one over here is descriptors. This is um, some focuses. There's like focus nouns. Um... And you, you you pair these together to get evocative pairings that suggest to your intuition the next place to go. And I'll generate a couple here. Uh, no, I'll, I'll just I'll actually jump right into my example of the first time I used this at a table. So I had some players in a in a D and D five E campaign, Rime of the Frost Maiden, and they had taken uh, to make a long story short, they'd taken a boy who is from an, an indigenous community in Icewind Dale. He's one of the ragged barbarians. Um, but he was raised not in his tribe. He was raised in town. So they'd had this little boy. And they took him from the town, and he they sort of like replanted him in his indigenous community that he didn't really grow up in, but where he, I don't know, belonged in some sense. Fast forward literally six months of real time in life through 2023 right and they pass through this community again and a lot's going on in the campaign and i ask them what do you guys want to do while you're here at the evermelt and they go we want to check on that kid we want to check on that boy sven and as a gm i had that moment that we have we all have every session i went uh oh I haven't thought about that kid at all. Like, this could be a really cool story moment, but I hadn't prepped for this at all. And so, I whipped out... Iron Sworn is a game that's sort of Viking-themed, right? And this is like a... It was a Viking-themed um, uh, tribe that these people were um, were in. And so, I whipped out an, an oracle to try and answer this incredibly vague question. And what I rolled, I, I remember exactly what I rolled. I rolled um, reject, and it was price. Price is on here somewhere. So I rolled on this table and this table, and it was reject price. Very vague sounding, right? Reject price. What the hell does that mean? And the first thing that occurred to me was, oh, well, probably in this tribe. It just instantly came to my head, kind of. Oh, well, probably in this tribe, there's a price of admission. Young young men and women have to go through, um, like, rituals of, of adulthood or initiation to become adult members of the tribe. And that's the price this kid's had to pay for coming back to this tribe. And maybe this kid has basically rejected this process that's been imposed on him. And so I said to my table, yes, Sven's having trouble getting along because he doesn't want to do the rituals of manhood from this tribe, and he feels it makes him feel even more like an outsider. And the table got together, and we improvised. I, I was like, guys, okay, let's come up with a bunch of rituals and that this tribe might use to initiate its young ones, and, like, why is Sven struggling, and how do you guys address this problem? And it led to some incredibly beautiful... Um, moments. But if I didn't invite the influence of the Oracle, I probably just would have said, like, Sven's doing great, 
or whatever. You see him playing with the other kids. You did the right thing saving him, right? Instead, this the and the cool thing is is there's actually a, the one of the central characters actually have the um, art for the party. Where's the art for the? Oh yeah, there's my rhyme of the frost man. This one character is also a member of that tribe who also didn't grow up in the tribe. So her and the NPC were both outcasts and it led to them sort of like bonding a little bit about feeling like outsiders. It was stunning. Um, And so these oracles, these abstract oracles, action theme based oracles that generate these random prompts, there are all kinds of sets of oracles you can use. Some are, again, card based. Some are, this one is a book long. This one's one page. I'll, I'll get around to these in a second. Um, they are there like a, like kind of like a tarot card, right? They're there to, not to give you a specific answer, but to get, to to sort of like a Rorschach test to sort of say like, I'm going to give you a cue. What might that mean to you? Right. And so I'm going to, you could use it and you could use these widely, this same table. Um, you could use this table to give depth to an NPC, particularly like an NPC motivation or ask deep questions about what an NPC thinks about a particular subject or, um, or it could be a group of NPCs. Maybe you've got a faction and everybody's wondering like, what does this faction do? Roll on the table. What does this NPC want? Roll on the table. Uh, what does, uh, what does this magic item do? Roll on the table. What is this? What is this lore? You can use it to flesh out lore, right? So to show you how I use these, then I'm going to give tips for using them well. To show you how I use these, I'm going to use the questions I asked in the intro setup for this video. I had three scenarios, three joke scenarios. I'm going to use, actually, I think I'm going to grab this one, or this is this Oracle underneath, and I'm going to use this to generate answers um, to that. Uh, Actually, I'll use the one I had just in front of me because it's fantasy themed. Um, And I'll make this, I'll make these fantasy scenarios. So I said an abandoned temple, uh, and the lore master bard wants to find out why the temple was abandoned. So watch, watch, we'll do this for me. Remember, there's no right answers. We're just trying to throw something inspirational, like a free association at our imaginations and see what pings, right? So I'm totally improvising this right now. The temple, there's an abandoned temple of some sort. And the bard wants to know what happened in the past that caused this temple to empty out. So I'm going to do action theme. 62, 90. Overwhelm, quest. Overwhelm, quest. That's really tough. Um, Overwhelm, quest. Hmm. Maybe... Um, there's somebody, okay, here's, I'm going to go with the first thing I think of, quest. Maybe there was another group like our protagonists, our PCs, who came to this temple, um, on their, maybe even searching for the same thing as the PCs or something else. They came here on a pilgrimage or on a holy mission and they cleaned this place out they wiped this place off the face of the earth maybe it was a temple of giants and these these individuals came here and slew all of the giants right and so they were overwhelmed by another group of people on a quest that's just what i came up with and if i didn't like that you can always re-roll right i didn't want to do that with the first roll but i could i thought about it for a second i thought you know what this actually isn't giving me anything i'm gonna re-roll we'll get to our tips later right um Generating a random treasure. For that, I'm going to use um, the next page here. I'm going to use descriptor focus. So I need to um, descriptor and a focus. This is more noun based than theme based. So let's do a treasure. And this is going to be a, maybe like it might end up being a sci fi treasure. So treasure 69, 31, 69, 39. New. Oh, that's cool. New. 69, 31. Equipment. Oh, new equipment. Well, I want to make it really cool, um, so we won't just do upgraded versions. Uh, well, new, actually, when it talk about equipment, maybe what it is is it's all, like, event- it brand new, fresh adventuring stuff, which is its own mystery in itself, right? Let's just say they find a dragon's hoard. They find a dragon's hoard, and there's, like, sc- scales for measuring gold. 
There's like a bunch of 10 foot poles. There's like all these coils of rope, right? That one's kind of, let's see if we get another one. Oh, zero, zero. Oh, violent is a hundred. Violent number four. Violent archive. That's great. Like a bunch of books that have been trapped um, magically. Maybe, maybe violent archive could be a book of lore or a spell book that has, that like attacks you when it tries, right? It's got like these chains on it that are animated and try to lash out at you if you try to open it up. You get what I mean, right? We play around with that. And the last one uh, I'm going to do as a sample is, let's make up another one. Um, uh, what was my third example? Oh, yeah, the drunkard at the tavern. Remember that? Why is this guy sitting around drunk, right? Your 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 PCs came into town, this frontier town. Let's just call it a level one D&D 5e party, right? They come to town, you have a, give them a quest, they're staying the night in the inn, and all they want to do is talk to this drunk. And they go, why is this drunkard always sitting around at this tavern? 77, 33. 77, secure, 33. Peace! Whoa! Why is this guy always here? Secure, peace. Um, maybe he is a dip... Uh, this is the first thing that occurs to me. And not, not the right answer, not the best answer, the first thing that occurs to me. This guy is a diplomat in town, trying from, like, a another town, trying to secure a deal. And, the per, like, um, maybe it's a trade deal or maybe it's a political alliance. And, um, like, every second he's spent on this project has been a waste of time. And, like, maybe the mayor of this town is avoiding him. And so he's just sitting here, like trying to make an alliance and nobody wants to meet with him and he's just getting drunk all day now your now your players are like whoa i didn't know there's pol politics going on maybe we should make friends with this guy right maybe this guy's his own quest giver maybe we want to help him out or whatever um so this is this is how we use these oracles so that's that's some examples right um that and and so they're they're very flexible so what are some tips for using oracles well at the table um, the first one is actually, since I want to take you through some of these, yeah, let's do that first. I want to take you through some of these oracles. Like, I didn't even show you, like, what I'm using here, right? My first tip is to find the right oracle you need, but don't bloat yourself. Don't get too much. When I go to the table, I pick one oracle that's right for the job, Right. And and diff there's it's very hard to find a universally good oracle. So let's take you through a few right now. Um, these books of oracles I'm using right here are the um, are for Iron Sworn, which is a, so this is these are books of oracles for Viking style dark fantasy campaigns of all kinds. Really, it could be like a, a cool old school D and D game, or it could be something very like Ralph Bakshi dungeon crawl classics Gonzo, or it could be like straight up Vikings. And this is more like like Star Wars sci fi. And this has these are very thick. They're meant for running uh, very robust campaigns in those settings. Um, and it's good to have setting specific oracles. Um, because the prompts, the words, right? If they're, if your oracles have words like technology, um, then they will be troublesome in a very Bronze Age setting, right? So we want to, we do want to find the right oracle. So I like these. These can be very robust though, because they combine all three different types. We have everything from vague oracles to. Um, and we have action theme, which I was using earlier, and we have literal, like, name oracles in here. Turning points, plot twists. This is very interesting. If you want to see dark fantasy right here, Mystic Backlash. This has a general oracles for um, what happens when magic goes wrong. Not highly relevant for sci-fi. So one of my tips is find the right thing. Um, now... You can also, this is about middle, middle of the road. This has a few, you know, a few dozen tables each in here. There are some very heavy oracles. This is Mythic GME, Mythic Game Master Emulator. This is a full-on hardcover book that has, like, tons of oracles. Look at these. Ele meaning tables. You know, all these tables in them. Mythic is a book that has an entire system in it for running games solo. It's a little heavier than you need to bring to the table, but if you're really trying to dig into oracles and the theory behind using them well, Mythic is a good place to go. Um, but I'm going to lead you in the other direction. So I like Iron Sworn because I'm doing pretty robust stuff. 
a lot of times well, all you need is a one page oracle. Remember that giant book I just showed you, Mythic GME? This is Mythic one page. It's it's like a couple bucks on drive through RPG. Um, there's a guide on how to there's like a 10 page guide on how to like use it really well. Um, but once you have this at the table, there's a table for like, yes, yeah, simple. Yes. No, Dis they they do action and description a little different you like start with one word and then if it's not enough you add another and you add let's do it right now right they might be so discover meaning choose the action column for details so i'm going to choose the description column to get a meaning 73 maybe I'm, I'm looking in a temple 73 what's that perfect interesting i don't know what perfect means maybe it's pristine in here let's add some more 41 perfect perfect environment okay so maybe this this temple has like is like idyllic it's beautiful it's filled with um whatever's right for the climate right like it's tropical it looks like a it looks like something out of the mummy it's it's beautiful right i'm gonna add one more so perfect environment 66 leave or new i'm gonna stop there perfect environment and i got too far you don't want to push yourself so hard you don't want to bloat yourself with too much when something isn't pinging for you leave it and move on um so there's besides one page mythic uh, there is i'm gonna leave links to these in the description there's one page solo engine i'm not sure if this is free um but it is creative commons that's pretty neat um and this is like there's you can pair either cards like little playing cards or you can do um 1d6 rolls like very simple results and you can play around with these you can figure out what you prefer the besides exploring all of the options remember like when i sit down at the table I, I, you look at me i've got these piles of tools right but when i go to the table after i've done my prep sometimes and this is these days after playing, you know, I've run a lot of the major D&D 5e campaigns. I play, like, PBTA games now. I'm, I'm doing a lot, right? Sometimes, at the end of my Rhyme at the Frostmaiden campaign, the only thing I would have open the whole campaign is I just keep my action theme table in front of me. Because otherwise, I'm good. Otherwise, I got command. This is This was my backup. Well, oh, man, we, we took a left turn instead. You thought we were going to take a right turn. We took a left turn. Okay, I'm going to hit you up with action theme 515 create secret yeah it's oh how what do we do with that right so um what i would recommend against is getting too bloated i've talked about this on this channel before but i'm going to use an example of this right tome of adventure design a lot of people think that what you need is more tables this is a book full of tables. I call this the book of advent of analysis paralysis, the tome of analysis paralysis. This is a table for everything in the world. Um, many people get to this. They 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 discover the power of oracles. They're like, I want an oracle for everything. Um, and what you end up with is um, truly an oracle for everything. And everybody I know who grabs this book is like, it's too much. It it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't guide me anywhere. I end up just. What? I didn't end up just sitting here and flipping through tables instead of doing anything. Um, and so I recommend going as starting slim or starting with whatever inspires you and being very careful about getting bigger than that. So that was some cool. Those are some cool samples. Um, my other two major tips for bringing oracles out of solo gaming, and they're very fun for solo gaming. I highly recommend any GM. Maybe I'll make a separate video on, like, why anybody who runs for tables needs to try solo play. But um, my other two tips for bringing these tools out of solo and into your group games is listen to what your intuition wants and abandon what doesn't work for you. Which is what I've been talking about this whole time, right? There's no correct interpretation of the oracle. It's not what these are here for. These are about inspiring your imagination. And part of that is respecting your intuition and your um, instinct. And so you have to respect what comes naturally and automatically to you, right? Because if you, I've seen this actually with some great, if you if you ever saw, saw Me, Myself, and Die, which is a trailer where Trevor Duvall, who's a, who's a voice actor, he plays solo games. It's like Critical Role with one guy, right? Season two, he plays this game, Iron Sworn. It's very cool watching him because he interprets oracles like I've been doing live. But once or twice in the campaign, 
even in front of the camera, he go, he'll go like he'll go like okay, um, overwhelm nature. I don't know what that means, so forget it. I'm rolling again. That doesn't do anything for me. I'm moving on, right? So roll on the table, close your eyes, try it out, like I did once on this on on this video. I'm actually doing it right now. You can't see my face, but I'm closing my eyes. Close your eyes and just like, uh, you know, capture hope. Capture hope. Capture hope. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just, what does it make you think of? What's the first image that jumps to your mind? Go there, right? Don't over, you know, the worst thing you can be doing is overthinking or quashing your first ideas. The worst thing you could do is just be, like earlier on when I was talking about, um, what was it? It wasn't the treasure. It was, uh, um, what was it two seconds ago? I already forgot because it was spontaneous. I hadn't planned it. Um, when I thought about, oh, that adventuring party coming in and clearing out that temple. I was like, well, I don't know. That's not really like exactly what the prompt was. It doesn't matter because it was something that suddenly was there when nothing was there. And that's the magic. What you want to do is encourage the magic. You don't want to overthink. You don't want to shut yourself down. You just want to try it, right? Get excited. They say this thing like um, about flipping a coin on a decision. One of the things you can do when you flip a coin on a decision is flip a coin, but when that coin is flipping in the air, ask yourself what am I hoping it will land on? And then do that. Don't even look at the result. Because once you flip it in the air, your instinct in your intuition goes, oh, I know what I want. Respect that. So that's my first tip. My second tip about using oracles in this way is ask yes or no questions. This is really cool. One of the things that's here on Mythic GME, I haven't mentioned this yet, but it's really cool. One thing that's in a lot of these games is, and one thing that some people just like, you know, some people start with Mythic, like a big hardcover book. Then they go down to one page, and then they just get down to a simple yes or no table. Yes or no questions can be really powerful because all the time I feel like GMs, we have this pressure to have like the right answer when really all we have are pretty simple likelihoods. I'll give you an example of this one that happened recently in my game is I was playing solo, I was playing Starforged, and an NPC was stalling the bad guy. I was trying to get away, and an NPC ally was f basically one on one the big bad evil guy. They were stalling. I'll stall him. You get the girl to safety, right? That kind of thing. Um, and I, I thought to myself, I'm like, well how do I do this fight between two NPCs that Star Force isn't really designed for that? There's no rules. Well, maybe I roll the battle move, but that's really designed for players. And like, what the hell am I supposed to do here? And then I thought to myself, oh, well, simple. I think it's likely she'll pull it off and I'll just roll on the likely yes, no. It says 75 or less, it's a yes. So I'll just roll the yes, no. 95, it's a no. She's unable to do it. Maybe she dies. Maybe she he overwhelms her and I don't know captures us or whatever right but um in that it did roll a boom yes in that case and she held him off and it was cool but yes no questions tell your players you're doing it um you know so this table I don't know if you can see it says you first you decide the odds 50 50 maybe it's likely maybe it's unlikely maybe it's almost certain or maybe it's a small chance and it'll tell you you know you're going to roll a percentile dice and if it's likely, 75 or, or less, it's yes. If it's a tiny chance, small chance, you would need to roll a 10 or less. If it's almost certain, 90 or less is good, right? You're trying to, it's a roll under. Um, and do that with your players. Your players will go like, okay, we try the door. And you're thinking, I don't know, should the door be locked? Or the players will be like, is there anything in this room that can help us? I think there should be. You know, I'm in an armory. I think there should be more arrows or whatever. And as a GM, it can suck because you feel like you're making basically a, a game balancing judgment. This is a great example. Your players walk into an armory. They need arrows. Are there more arrows? And you can go, well, you know what? The table says, you know, it's likely. So 75 or less. 
92. Sorry, guys, I know it was likely, but turns out there's no arrows, and your players will go, damn. And they'll respect that, I think, when they know that you used probability. Um, it's, it's so good when you don't want to generate mechanics to simulate a resolution, and you don't want to make sort of like a judgment call that either votes for or against your players. Um, that's all I got. I hope this has been an uh, interesting video for you guys. I'm trying to do more content around solo gaming and GMing. Um, I think I want to do a lot more content around Iron Sworn. I think that'd be really cool, but everybody wants me to do crafting videos instead. I've got a couple of those as well. Um, but let me know in the comments what you think. Um, anything you want to want me to... Um, anything you want to tell me in the comments, I would love to hear. Uh, thank you to all of the discords full of solo gamers that like help walk me through and teach me this stuff. Thank you for people like, um, podcasts like Ask the Oracle or The Bad Spot or Me, Myself, and Die for showing what's possible. Um, I rest on the shoulders of giants and my elders and all those who have gone before and all those cool cats who, um, are out there listening to me on the radio waves <laughs> Tonight, I hope you got some value out of this. Um, I think this is a super powerful tool um, that I really love because we can cultivate a more broad, expansive um, imagination. And I, I want that for all of us and anything that helps us improvise well. I'm always on this channel talking about how to improvise well. And I think this really helps. Um, and that's what I've got. Uh, my name is Jack Edward. This channel is Play Material. I hope you subscribe to keep in touch with me. I don't really care if you like... I like reading your comments. I read all the comments and I respond to a lot of them. But really, I care about those subscriptions because it helps me um, reach you when the algorithm doesn't want me to reach you. Because um, the algorithm uh, just wants you to watch the latest, like, five must-have cantrips videos or whatever the hell, right? Um... Uh, much love to you and yours. And I, I encourage you to invite, invite the mystical into your table. Invite the muse. Invite inspiration. Invite spontaneity. Be ready to pick up the phone when fate and the oracle calls. And when it's got nothing to say to you, hang up, move on, and do what's right for you and your players. Go find your people. Go have fun. Have a great weekend. I think I'm publishing this on a Saturday morning. Have a killer weekend. If you're listening to this on a weekday, get through it, man. Find your joy. Uh, live your life. Play some games. Uh, be merry. Uh, and let me know what I can do for you next. My name is Jack Edward, and this was Play Material. Good, good, good night. Good night.